Okay, welcome to the Bookmap Live Order Flow Advanced Analysis Webinar. Uh, risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors, past performance is not indicative of future results. Okay, and um, I uh, gave the link out uh, to uh, some of the uh, uh, new traders um, uh, for today to get a peek into uh, this, uh, uh, this webinar uh, and uh, what you get with the trial. So, uh, so welcome, and uh, uh, let's uh, let's take a look here. We'll dive right in. Um, and um, first thing uh, I want to take a look at is um, oil, uh, and um, because you know I wanna, what I want to cover here on oil. Now, this was um, the day that we saw the big move to the downside, right? And I kept on looking for it to, to rebound, and we did we did get that rebound. Um, uh, a, a couple different times, but then it, it failed and then went to the downside. But I remember, uh, and what this is why I want to cover this, is we saw so much absorption on the way down, okay, all the way down through these areas. And uh, and then we see the buying uh, uh, initiate down here uh, yesterday uh, and the move to the upside, okay. So I recall all of that absorption that we saw on the way down was in this little area right in here, okay, uh, just below 4740, okay. Where did we go to? And this line has not changed. I kept, I've kept it here uh, for the last uh, three days or so. Um, we actually noticed it, it being important over in this area here on, uh, on, the, uh, on the 15th, okay, which was uh, what? That's uh, Tuesday, I guess. Um, and, um, and that's where we saw a flip in the, uh, a change in the order flow, right? Uh, and yet again here and all of, all of this absorption. So what we were witnessing in book map, um, was not shorter term stuff. Okay. That's what I want to cover. Uh, you know, this was larger players, uh, and we knew their position. Okay. And, uh, and we know that they're averaging in there on their cost on the way down. And, uh, if they can get it back up into these areas here, that's great. You know, uh, they can cover if they like, uh, you know, they're already out of profit. Okay. So, um, you, you start to piece together of the order flow here on a 30 minute candlestick chart. Okay. But you wouldn't be able to see that here, uh, unless you were, you were looking at book map. Okay. To understand that, that, uh, absorption like that, uh, into some of these areas. Okay. So, um, anyway, I just wanted to cover that because, uh, I, we get the question frequently, um, regarding, uh, is this only for scalping or, uh, you know, can it be used on, uh, intraday or, you know, um, not intraday, uh, you know, more swing trading. Uh, and, uh, and there's a good example. Okay. We knew their position, uh, and, um, uh, we we're looking for that, anticipating that test of, uh, of 4740, uh, and, uh, and we got it, uh, in the overnight session last night. Okay. 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 So, uh, oil. Uh, let's. I want to take a quick look at oil. I've got both contracts up here, uh, and um, so I've got the. No, that's gold. Okay, here. I've got the V contract for October, and then I've also. Oh, I don't have the other one. I had Rhythmic earlier and I lost my data. Um, I had both contracts earlier. I had the U contract as well as the V contract here in oil. And what I wanted to show was that both look very similar and they have high liquidity, uh, very close to price. Okay. Why is that? Why does it look like this? And what's going on is rollover. Okay. They're rolling over uh, one contract into the next. Okay, and the, and uh, and you're st you're seeing the uh, the volume uh, switch to the new contract, All right? So um, uh, it's another another thing that you're going to witness uh, using Bookmap. Um, so when you start to see this kind of behavior here, uh, you can start to understand what's going on. Okay, there's a, there's another uh, thing that um, uh, using fundamentals and starting to understand uh, risk uh, in the uh, in the fundamentals. Um, so let's see if we have an example here. I don't. Uh, but uh, during an economic release, you'll note how something changes. Okay, The book starts to uh, really thin out, and uh, these, these areas will start to get really dark. And that's because uh, they, they don't want risk in the market, so they'll pull the liquidity. Okay, So if you see some geopolitical uh, type of activity, 
uh, or you don't know it's going to happen, right? You don't, you, those, those things can happen uh, out of the blue. Uh, but Bookmap can give you some insight to that too. Uh, if you start to see a lot of the, the algos turn off uh, and a lot of the uh, participants pull their liquidity, uh, and you'll see it all at once, in, in fact. Uh, the switch is, it's kind of like this right here. This is kind of what it looks like, right? This area here, note how it got dark like that, okay? Uh, and in and, and this little area, they, they all kind of um, basically uh, started to pull uh, at the same time, all right? So if you see, you can also see that in book map um, to kind of give you clues to uh, maybe some of the um, uh, geopolitical or, um, you know, fundamentals uh, out there. Okay. Uh, good morning, Istvan. Okay. Uh, welcome to the webinar. All right. Um, oh, I know. Uh, yeah, Guido, this is this is um, not what I'm talking about. I, I'm just, it looks somewhat like this. Um, you would see it on both sides with a fundamental release or, uh, you know, uh, geopolitical news or something. Okay. It's going to be it's going to be the entire market, not just uh, not just one side. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, due to the rollover, uh, I don't want to look at oil. Uh, and um, in fact, we were covering this earlier uh, in the um, uh, you know the the uh, platform details uh, webinar. A lot of really interesting uh, price activity here in Nasdaq going on. All right, and. Um, uh, saw some uh, some really nefarious stuff here. Uh, I, I thought, and I'm I'm curious, like how uh, uh, what uh, maybe some of the governing bodies would think about some of this. Uh, let's take a look at the Nasdaq here around this 10:15, um, and um, uh, you can see the uh, the move to the upside. Okay, you can see the uh, high liquidity here, right at 5,800. Okay, and uh, and we see the uh, they they swept the book. They they took all that liquidity and they continued on to the upside. Strong move through 5,800. Okay, now as, as we cover uh, every day, um, uh, you know we we look for uh, that sweep of the book and then we look for and this is initiated buying here. Okay, and we're looking for them to come back and support price uh, from where we broke from. Okay, and we'll usually get uh, a retest of that area, and you'll see the buyer support it, just like this. Okay, in fact, we can draw in a trend line. Okay, we can we can start to draw in some of the structure uh, in some of these areas as well. Okay, you can draw in book map, uh, and uh, here here's our where we broke a structure. There's also a horizontal line, okay, right here. Okay, and we actually got a real retest of that horizontal line. Right here, okay. So uh, this is uh, this is what we're looking for, right? Exactly what we're looking for, and we're looking for at least the the high to get tested, uh, and maybe price. I would start to uh, anticipate, you know, price discovery to the upside, okay. Uh, now um, this is where uh, it's pretty wicked stuff, okay. So we see high liquidity come back in here, right? And I'm I'm looking for 5,800. Be it trading above 5,800. Okay. Well, look what they did. Okay. They they uh, started to pull some liquidity here. Okay. Uh, and some of it um, they definitely you know you can see it the the trading took place right within this high liquidity area right here. Okay. But um, uh, look at the spoof on the other side. Okay. You see the um, the uh, uh, high liquidity here. Okay, short term high liquidity doesn't stay in the book for very long, and uh, and we we get a, a nice stop run through all of this area here, uh, and uh, uh, right down uh, into uh, kind of like a like you know it's going to be more or less like the POC of uh, of of this uh, this range here, okay, and um, and then you can see that uh, uh, then we found the buyers yet again, okay, and uh, especially right in this area here, okay, here's that initiated buying. Okay, and then move to the upside. So wicked stuff, right? And um, uh, here's another uh, spoofing type of activity here. Very, very high liquidity layered in here, three layers deep uh, of high liquidity. Uh, let's see, it's like 83, um, you know, 82 contracts or so. Uh, and um, although this is pretty far away uh, from current price, usually, you know, it's it's quite close. 
uh, to current price, and it'll skew that auction, and then you'll see the uh, price react to it. Uh, nonetheless, this area here is uh, is very very sensitive, uh, and um, and we can see uh, all sorts of uh, um, you know pretty pretty wicked stuff going on here. Okay, uh, in fact, we come back down into that area uh, again here. Okay, we see that we see that uh, uh, then we get the the we get a bounce. Okay, uh, and then we we see follow through to the downside here. Okay. Now it looks like it wants to trade down below 5,800. So it's just banging around back and forth uh, between that area here. Okay. So let me go back here now. Um, and um, okay. So let me zoom out a little bit. So I'm kind of losing my place here. Okay. All right, so, uh, and again, very, very high liquidity here, uh, but then they look at how they pulled, okay, as price is coming down. So uh, did they have interest? No. Uh, these guys do not have interest to trade here uh, at all. Uh, but we do see uh, a retest back to structure uh, yet again. So um, uh, this is where we broke from right here, okay, and it's that 5,800 level uh, again. Uh, and... Um, uh, we get a retest to it, and this time we're accepting down below it. Okay, so let me draw that one in as well. So here's our structure. Here's our retest of it. Okay, here's our break from that structure. All right. Okay, good stuff. Uh, and um, what's nice about it, too, um, is... Um, uh, we, we can start to read the, um, uh, the, the these flips in the order flow. I mean, it's really pretty clear. Uh, you know, look at the initiated buying here. Uh, we see sellers start to come in here again, but then uh, we get the break of that structure like we covered, uh, and then uh, and then you see you know continuation to the upside. Okay, a nice cluster of volume of aggressive buying up here. But uh, now we're starting to see on the other side. So this is getting, we're just, they're distributing out. This is, this is a distribution pattern here. Uh, and um, this is a head and shoulders, right? Or you can say, you know, uh, you know, a complex head and shoulders uh, or, you know, double top, whatever. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, what matters here is to understand their position. Uh, you know, what, what's going on with the majority of these traders, okay? We see the aggressor over here. In the buying, and uh, and then look how that starts to dry up, okay? And we start to see selling come in here, okay? This is what we look for uh, in the order flow, all right? Selling again down here at some of these levels, uh, and you know it's still not really, to be honest, like it, I don't think this is it, you, you're seeing it flip, you're you're seeing it um, starting to to change over. I would like to see this down a little bit lower and a little bit more um, uh, volume to uh, you know on the downside here. Uh, and um, uh, you know we we don't we don't get that we don't see that here. Uh, but um, uh, you know we did not hold uh, above. We tested the high here again and look at the retest here and we're exhausting out. And then that's where the sellers take control right in here. So this is where it starts to get good, uh, right in here. Okay. And, um, uh, and then they just continue to hit the bid. Okay. All right. So, you know, we can, we can go through, uh, and, and look at the, this again and again. Uh, you know, here, here's the, um, uh, order flow, uh, nice, nice volume to the downside here. Uh, but then uh, you see the buyers, uh, you know, come in right in these areas here. Again, trend line break or, you know, level bro broken here. A move back up to where we broke from previously. Okay. And then look at the selling here. So looking for, again, uh, price discovery to the downside. Okay. And uh, in the in the, the map, the uh, the heat map, the liquidity, uh, it's uh, it's finding some of those areas. Uh, and then uh, and it continues to uh uh, uh, to the downside. Okay. This is looking like a flush to me, uh, just a massive amount, um, of, uh, of volume here, uh, trading through, uh, and, um, we'll see if, uh, did we, did we bounce after that or not? No, we, we continue down. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. You see, when you see that that final flush uh, like this, you can start to uh, look for, and you'll just see this massive amount of selling, just like this, uh, and then it, it, it's like a V bottom, uh, and then you see the move right back up. Okay. And then uh, basically, there's no more sellers. Right. The sellers have have dried up. Now we do get one more test of that area, and uh, and we break we the the, the low here. Okay, but uh, and then the buyers step in though. All right, so all sorts of good stuff in this uh, uh, in this chart. Uh, and and you know after after this kind of flush through, uh, and then uh, this this might have shaken you out a little bit, but uh, uh, you can uh, uh, start to look for uh, buyers to uh, the sellers to exhaust out and the buyers to step in. Okay, after something like this, and and that's exactly what occurred. Okay, now we're above 5,800. Okay, and that's where the initiated buying, you can see it right in here. That's where they came in. All right. So great stuff here. Um, and uh, very, very transparent. Okay, Anyone, any of those sellers placing their stops maybe up in this area? Okay, They're, they just got stopped out. So let's read it uh, in the current market and what's going on now. Okay. Wow. I mean, it's both sides now. I mean, we're seeing both buying and selling. Okay. Uh, big volume dots on both sides. So um, uh, no, uh, no, no real clarity on that. I mean, I do like seeing the buying still here. Okay. Um, and uh, and and here as well. Okay, so um, uh, let's let's see if they uh, we can step in and we can break structure again and, and then uh, continue to the upside here. Okay, so we want to go up to maybe uh, 5806 or seven, and we want to see initiated buyers come right back in. Okay, here we are. Here here we are, just there, and they didn't step in. Okay, let's see if we get another rotation. Okay, where would I be targeting some of the higher liquidity up here? Okay, so uh, first stop would be like this 58.08 uh, and a half, uh, 58.10, 58.12. Uh, let's see a few questions. Uh, yeah, uh, Guido, I don't have ZB or ZN up. Uh, Istvan, um, how do you set the CVP uh, bars like I did? Okay, that's that's really easy. Okay, well, ah, here we go. Okay, so this is what we're looking for right here, right? Um, and um, and they started to pull that liquidity here uh, instead, right? Boy, it's just it's just moving back and forth and back and forth. I don't know what's uh, what's going on here. I haven't really looked at uh, uh, at the news, um, but um, uh, anyway, um, yeah. I mean, still, I mean, we're moving we're moving lower now, but I don't see a lot of aggressive selling here. Okay, I don't see clusters of of activity here uh, hitting the bid. Okay. Let's see if maybe we can we can uh, come into this area of high liquidity. There we go, right into that area of high liquidity just now. Okay, at 58.03, and uh, now I'm looking for those buyers to step back in. Okay, up to 06. Okay. Still looks like there's more, you know, we just have, we have more buy-in here. 
Um, in, the, in the overall, I mean, I'm not seeing like like that uh, that what we're looking for in the order flow uh, on that sell side. I'm looking. I'm, I'm seeing more volume trade. Uh, you know, aggressive buying and uh, at the higher highs. So due to that, I start to anticipate the move to the upside. Okay, and we're getting it. Okay, now we're above that 58.06 area here. We just broke that. Okay, still looking for 58.10 now. Boy, it's 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 wicked. Um, you know, this night another little flush through. All right, here in this area. Uh, you know, just below the structure and then right back into the range. Uh, let's see here. Okay, CVP column. Sure. Um, let's uh, let's go through that. This is uh, very simple to set up. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit closer. So CVP stands for Chart Range Volume Profile. Uh, and it just gives me, I mean, look at the buying here on the upside. You know, I mean, I'm anticipating the move to the upside. I mean, we see the pressure here, okay? Uh, this is the way that I've got it set up is, is a, uh, as a profile here. You can split this out as well. Um, you can right click in the column, okay? And you can format the column, okay? Beautiful, 5810 just hit, okay? Uh, and the, the, our column gave us some nice insight on that right, right here, okay? W you know, we can see, look at all the aggressive buying here. Okay. So this is the way I've got it set up. Um, uh, I have it as bars and numbers. I like it for the uh, CVPD bars and numbers. That's my personal uh, choice. Uh, I have both bid and, and offer showing. Uh, I have a VWAP line, which is this white line right here. Okay. And um, a lot of times, though, I will also split out the data, too, because we, we can. Uh, we have both aggressors here. Uh, and then I, I like to look for, uh, you know, the, that buying pressure, like right in this area here. Look at that. Um, you know, it gave us nice insight. And, and we, you know, this was before this move to the upside just took place. Okay. So we, we've been nailing it here with the order flow. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, reading it uh, pre pretty nicely because it's displaying pretty nicely. Right. Uh, it's, just, it's been displaying itself really nicely. Uh, you know, we can, we can see the... Um, uh, the aggressor, all right? And we start to anticipate these kinds of moves to the upside, okay? So is that this is the kind of transparency that uh, we're looking for uh, in the marketplace. Uh, and uh, and today, the, the NASDAQ, although it's whippy, I mean, uh, we're, we're still reading it correctly, right? Down in this area here, I just didn't see the sellers stepping in. I didn't see the this uh, flip and order flow. Nice target. Very nice target here with this high liquidity here, and we came right to it. Uh, and um, uh, and still though, uh, I didn't see a lot of selling come in. It still looked like more buying. Okay, here at 58.06, this was giving us nice insight here. More more uh, volume, more buying uh, at the higher high. Still, we got we got a, a move, quick move right back down uh, to where we broke from here, a little lower as well. And then right back up with a nice cluster of volume trading up here, okay. And then you can start to anticipate that move, right? And uh, and we're getting it. Um, so uh, yeah, 58010, uh, just a little bit of a pause, and then it went right back up into high liquidity here uh, at um, uh, 5812, and is is trending pretty nicely at the moment. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, any questions on the uh, on the column there? Okay. Now I'm I'm pretty f zoomed out right now, uh, so you won't see the numbers. Uh, you know, uh, it's been so whippy, and we have so much volatility. Uh, if if I zoom in a little bit, just with using my center mouse wheel, I can zoom in very quickly in and out. Um, then um, uh, then the numbers will will um, will will appear here. Okay. Okay, so that's another way. Uh, a lot of traders uh, really like to look at the columns data and they like to have it split out just like this to see the aggressor, okay? Uh, again, bid versus offer, who's winning the battle here, okay? Uh, and um, and now 
uh, well, we can see that, uh, uh, well, we see some selling uh, as well now, okay? And we can just look at the dot and the color and the size uh, and understand that as well. Okay, in this area, in this area here, down here, it doesn't look too good. Um, uh, and actually now it still looks like uh, buyers are, are uh, in, the, in the game here. And there's, we're still going up higher. Okay. Now, uh, another um, nice feature is resetting this column uh, and the aggressor. Okay. You can also just hover over the uh, uh, vertical, um, you know, the, the column line up here, and, uh, and we can uh, widen this out. Okay. You can also just, uh, you know, grab it and, um, and move the entire, just left click, hold, and drag. You can move the entire column. So you, you can really build out uh, a dome here very quickly. Uh, however you like, uh, and um, let's uh, let's get into some of the resetting here because this is a, a nice feature. Um, a lot of traders they like to look at this, but now we have too much data here. So what we can do is we can uh, come down here and we can go to reset. Okay, and there's all sorts of configurations for resetting this. Okay, so we can schedule a reset to have happen every single minute or number of hours or seconds, or you can have it reset at a specific time as well like 9.30 uh, Eastern for the cash open. Uh, and then uh, there's a conditional reset here too. So if it uh, uh, goes out of a range and then uh, heads right back into that range, uh, that data will not reset, okay, based on number of seconds here. All right, so let's uh, get rid of the schedule reset. Uh, but I do want to show another one, which uh, this is one of the features I use, is I like using the, the double click here, reset on double click. Okay, so what I can do is just very quickly, I'll just double click in this column and it's, it's completely reset. So now I'm, I'm starting again, who's winning? Who's winning the battle? Which, which aggressor? What's the heat map look like? Yeah, I see liquidity here at 13. And this is where we traded earlier at 13, right? There was high liquidity here earlier between 12 and 13 and they're showing up again. All right, uh, and um, that looks like, I mean, we can see there's a little more selling pressure now. Right. Okay. Buyers are buyers come back in in this area here, but um, you know they're the, they're the buyers. Okay. There's our initiated buying again. Okay. Let's hit 17. Shies away from 17. There we go into 17. Okay. Let's see if we can get back up to uh, uh, 20 now. Okay, but you know, I'm reading it here. I mean, I'm seeing that that selling coming coming in here now, right? Now initiated buying just came back in here, so this is uh, getting a little more convoluted at the moment. Okay, let's see, we get our retest to where we broke from, just right here at 17. Okay, note, note how they, they were here on the offer, and now they're on the bid. A little bit lower, though. And let's see if we can break the highs into that 20 area. Okay, that's the target. Here we go. Okay, 20 is reached. Okay, these sellers here, they're going to be flipping out. And uh, nice cluster of volume up here. Okay. Uh, Nadim, flip of the order flow. How do we see buyers? A big green dots. Well, that's the the aggressor, right? Uh, market buys and sells. Okay, so uh, red dot, someone hit the market sell button. Okay, they took liquidity. Now I'll zoom into this area here. Okay, uh, so they took liquidity here, for example, uh, on that was on the best bid. Okay, the best bid at that point was, we see, you know, 10 contracts here. Okay, now we, we can also see an iceberg here. 
all right? Because we have 10 contracts here, but 38 traded. We have a trade here for 38. How is that possible? There's only 10. You, you can't trade more than what's here. It, tra it traded 28 contracts more than what was uh, here on the bid. Well, that's because this is being absorbed here by an iceberg order. Okay, so these 28 contracts here uh, were hidden in the, uh, they were not in the limit order book, but they did trade. All right, so then we, we tag it here. It's also this red number that you see here. Uh, but um, it, the red number in this in this column here, if, the, if this area gets retested, uh, then um, uh, this number is uh, going to uh, refresh, or the area will refresh. So that was the way we used to show the icebergs. We've enhanced it now to show it directly on the chart, which is fantastic. Okay, I, I really like it. Uh, I think it's really insightful. Um, and then now it turns into 49 because we've just compressed our timeline and squeeze those trades together, uh, and we have an overall of 49 here, okay? Okay, some of the columns data here. Um, so it's all initiated here with right-clicking, uh, and um, the the structure uh, here, you can see some of these, uh, just, you know, uh, a little line right here, here, and here, and then also down here. So it's different, uh, it's showing you different stuff here. Uh, the first one, uh, the division here is the, uh, just formatting that column, okay? Now for some of these data columns, you'll have more uh, data than others, or more uh, uh, options here than others. So for this one, you have uh, session accumulated or chart range accumulated. You can, you can change the uh, CVP to an SVP, okay? So let's right click again, let's change it back. Uh, and then uh, let's right click and you see, we also have the reset uh, options here. Okay, you're not gonna get reset options with the COB column, for example, or some of the other ones. All right, uh, and then um, uh, then uh, we have another division here and this area here, okay, are all the different data types, okay? COB, okay, that's our current order book column. Okay, we're looking at a volume column right now. We can also look at a trades counter. Okay, and what this is showing, let me format this into uh, profile. Okay, and what this is showing now uh, is um, uh, CTC. Okay, so it's a chart range, uh, but it, it's showing the, um, not the volume, it's showing the uh, number of trades that took place. Okay, uh, and uh, then we can also uh, look at the quotes that were refreshed that came into the book and, and refreshed at certain areas. And, uh, and we can, we can also, uh, take a look at that data here. Okay. Uh, we can also look at a quotes Delta. What this is showing here is liquidity that was added and pulled. Okay. The Delta. Okay. So if you see a negative number, that means liquidity was pulled. If you see a positive number, it was added. Okay, we can also uh, right click here. We can look at a couple different notes uh, columns. You can set your own notes and you can also have a time and sales. Now, if you wanna get rid of a column or insert a new column, uh, that is done in this area here, okay? So uh, I can insert a new column here uh, and a new one pops out to the right to where I was, from where I was. Same, it duplicates the column where I was, okay? And then now let's hide that column. So I'll right click again and then I'll change that to hide. There we go. Okay, and then this changes back to volume. Okay. Um, no, uh, uh, Istvan, that should it should be all available there uh, in the basic. You should have those options. Okay, the advanced is more about the uh, different add-ons. Okay, uh, not not the columns data though. Okay, all right. Let's go back to current price and see what's going on here. Okay. Wow. All right. So basically, another uh, just bashing uh, you know these traders here to the other side, and. Uh, 
you know, by the breakout that I saw here and, uh, you know, noticing that, that I, I was starting to notice some selling coming in here, um, you know, then I'm looking for this area up here. And I, I, I mentioned it as more of kind of like a stop hunt area. Okay, one more one more tap to the upside here and let's view that area and look at the buying here. OK, so this is where, again, we were reading the order flow uh, and today the order flow. Um, uh, well, we can look at the, the limit order book here as well, uh, but the, the traded volume is, is showing us some really nice stuff here uh, and um, uh, right right in this area here. OK, so the, the buyers, again, they, they're, they're drying up in this area here and the sellers take control here. OK, we get below here and the selling kicks in. Okay. They want to sell. They want to try to uh, get price below this swing here, uh, and uh, and continue to the downside. We even get two little, three little retests right here, to where that uh, you know selling uh, initiated. Okay, and then we see the 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 move to the downside. Okay, now this area down here. Look at the order flow down here. Okay, so we see. Look at the green. Uh, a lot of green. A lot of buyers starting to step in in this area here. Okay. And look at the selling here. Okay, that's it's not bad uh, for the selling. Maybe I, I would look for maybe just to, to try to touch this high liquidity here, but we don't. Uh, instead, they just sweep the book high to the upside here, uh, and the buyers are back in the game. I mean, it's just all over the place. I mean, these are big moves. Uh, nice, nice moves. Um, I should be I should be trading, um, but uh, let's see the. Um, uh, okay, so what I want to cover here is um, some of the uh, liquidity uh, that plays within um, the uh, basically the order flow uh, that we're looking at today. But we'll we'll see you know the difference here of little uh, higher areas of liquidity uh, and other examples, and we're not really seeing too much today. Uh, so, you know, these areas of high liquidity here, note how we're channeling between it, right? So it's it's giving that structure to the market, right? So, um, uh, you know, and we're starting to, we can start to read it down here too. Look how, as price was coming down into this area, look how they started to come into the book, okay? Uh, they're, they're, they were down here uh, at well, 58, 12, and, and uh, 11 and a half and uh, 11 and a quarter uh, and then they they um, uh, kind of boosted it up here okay they're looking at uh, at 58 12 and, and 12 and a half here okay. and that's that's showing some uh, you know it's not the the most bullish but it, it's more bullish than if uh, they had stayed here and then added maybe higher liquidity down below okay so that that's the the distinction I'm trying to make here Right. So if they're adding as price is coming down, that's that's showing that they want to, you know, they're going to front run. Uh, they're trying to get in uh, before these higher areas of liquidity are hit. OK. And instead, what happens right in this area here is they just um, the aggressors just uh, step right back in. OK. And now we're, we're right back down there again. OK. Um, yeah, I'm looking for it to get tested now. Um, here we go. And let's see if the sellers will just uh, sweep through uh, uh, 11 and 12 here. Okay, that doesn't look too good right now. The cluster of volume. I mean, we don't we don't see a lot of volume trading here. Okay, the cluster is up here at around 14, and the majority of it is buying too. So if we can sweep the book high. Uh, yet again, um, and get those buyers back in, uh, then then we'll see a nice move, I think, to the upside at least. You know, first target would probably be, uh, you know, see if they get back interested around this 18 level. Uh, if not, then 22. There they are. There we go. There's our move.
Okay. All right. So uh, another aspect I want to cover here, uh, and um, uh, showing it pretty nicely in our volume columns, um, is uh, uh, you know in a trending uh, a trending day. Okay. What uh, what that looks like, and uh, man, it's not. Let's just look at let's look at the CVP then, and instead of maybe the uh, SVP. Um, but uh, what you get on these trending days are uh, nice uh, multiple profiles like this. Okay, this is pretty muddled down here, uh, but these are these two. This double distribution here is pretty nice. Okay, and um, uh, and then uh, Francisco is just pointing this out. Uh, you know, this is this is why these guys are. Uh, providing high liquidity here uh, between 11 and 12. It's a low volume node. Okay, it's also a low volume node on our session range volume profile. Okay, so you can play off of the two different columns here, right? And each one has a different VWAP as well. So there's all sorts of things to look for. Uh, you know, for example, right here, here here's the um, the point of control. Okay, and we're trading above it now. Okay, fighting for that point of control. Uh, if we can get more buyers to step in here, uh, then we'll we'll get a retest, I think, of of the high, right? It's going to be a battle for this point of control. The majority of the traders. Okay, we did get our test at 18, right? And that was uh, that was our, our first area here. We didn't we did not see them jump in. Curiously enough, they did not jump in at all uh, with high liquidity. Uh, there's a little bit maybe here. All right, let's see. Now, you know, this if we can get above that point of control here and we get that initiated buy and we're looking for 22. Okay, showing interest here at 20 and a half. Okay, we're still above that point of control. So let's see if a buyer step back in right here. Okay, this is where we had structure. Now let's see, maybe the sellers take over. Uh, let's see here, more questions. Um, the the quotes um, uh, counter. Um, is showing um, it's not look it's not the number of contracts it's just you know uh, the number of orders uh, that are um, uh, refreshed okay so like let's say I come in with um, uh, let's say I have a, a hundred uh, hundred lots um, but it's one order okay the quotes counter is going to just tick one okay even if I have one lot uh, order uh, the, and, uh, you know, I, I, I want to be a buyer and then I pull it. Uh, well, the, the refresh will be one. Okay. And uh, why would the, why would we want to look at that data? Why would we want to look at a trades counter as well? Right. Instead of a volume profile. Well, the, the reason being is that um, uh, algorithmically here, uh, a lot of these, um, a lot of these algos will um, uh, disguise their uh, uh, size and position uh, by breaking it up into several small orders. Okay, so you won't see those those uh, large uh, block trades go through. Uh, you know, for like let's say for a hundred uh, in the Nasdaq, uh, you, you wouldn't see that. I mean, you you'll see some, uh, and we can filter for that as well. Uh, so let me, let me show that. I'll, I'll show you how we can filter for that. But the point here uh, is that um, uh, why we want to look at quotes data as well as trade uh, event data uh, is because that 100 block order um, is going to go through instead as um, 100 orders for one each. 
Okay, and uh, and we were looking at it earlier. Um, let's, uh, let's zoom into an area, and maybe we'll see. Okay, and uh, and you'll see the algorithmic activity. You just you know, and they'll very mechanically be uh, you know lifting the offer or or hitting the bid. Okay, maybe here. No, but look at yeah. This is this is getting a little bit. Uh, uh, I really like to see it when it's uh, very very clear and mechanical. Um, but um, uh, anyway, the uh, that's my point uh, and why you know um, a lot of the algos will not. They're more um, reading events than they are necessarily the volume. Okay, because there's trade interest. Uh, it's like a. Uh, you know, understanding and, and reading um, the uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, or the interest at an area. Okay, we just traded in a 22. All right, that was what we we're looking for as a target here is 22. All right, still looks good. I think maybe 23 here. Let's see if we can get to 23. We had, we had a retest here, but no volume here, okay? Sellers starting to come in. Sellers, and there we go. Now we got 23. Okay, these sellers are getting squeezed. Okay, so... Um, that's why we'll have the, uh, and the, the quotes counter, um, you know, this is basically like pit noise. You know, you, you see the, uh, you know, them shouting back and forth in the pits. Uh, they want to be buyers. They want to be sellers. Uh, and that's, that's, it's very similar here. So it's showing interest, you know, it's showing, they'll show really nice profiles here. Um, and uh, uh, you know that there's a lot of interest down here uh, at this area here at, at 5816. Okay. So if there's interest, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the algos are programmed to look for that uh, and, um, and understand uh, that um, uh, it can trade at these areas here. So like, for example, and this is giving us, look at the profile here, you know, and look at the interest up in this area here, right? It's, it's, uh, it's really tapering off. Okay, I don't see a lot of refreshes up here. Okay, and if there's no interest, well, what's going to happen? Uh, price is going to rotate to where the, where it can trade. Okay, and then we we'd be looking for maybe uh, 18 again. Okay, 25 hit, and then that might be it right into the area here of high liquidity. Okay, uh, and. Um, uh, if there's a lack of interest up here, sellers are going to come in and we're going to charge to the downside. All right. Um, all right, so let's. Um, I'll go through the filtering here, and then uh, and then we'll call it a week here, uh, and um, uh, and you guys have a have a have a good weekend. Uh, Want to go through some because I haven't covered um, some of these things in quite a while. So uh, you know we covered some of the automated strategies, and I got a lot of questions yesterday uh, from various traders and in support uh, regarding that. So uh, uh, it's good to go through some of these things. Um, uh, instead of just uh, purely uh, going through the uh, the order flow here, uh, and um, uh, as we are uh, you know waiting for some of this stuff to unfold as well, so let's take a look at the volume dots here. Uh, and there's ways of filtering for your volume. Okay, so I usually usually just leave it as the the restore uh, the default settings here. Okay. Now the dot size is a little too high for me with the with the uh, default, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this down. Okay, it, it's still showing strength. Wow. Jeez. It's just continuing. 
Uh, anyway, um, so there's way, ways of the, of the dot clustering, uh, but um, uh, the um, showing the block trades is what I want to go through. So that can be done here. Now, the clustering uh, is uh, is done with um, you know some of these. Um, there's a, there's some different ways to do it. You can have it as none, uh, smart uh, by time and by volume. Uh, now, uh, by time is pretty pretty straightforward. Okay, so like let's say every five minutes. I'm going to get a volume dot. Okay. Now note that the volume dot for this five-minute period here, or that's being built right now, um, it's, it'll it'll end in uh, just a few few seconds here, um, uh, is off of price. Okay. What it's showing here is a volume dot for this five-minute period on, based on the VWAP. So that's why it's down here. So the VWAP of this five-minute period is here at 25, or 25 and a half. Okay, so that's uh, that's how it displays it. Um, now, if we can go, we can go with um, uh, by volume here uh, as well. Okay, and this uh, input 500. So every dot that is painted here uh, constitutes 500 trades, or I'm sorry, 500 contracts. Okay, so all of these dots are going to be the same size unless someone traded for you know one order for more than 500, then it'll be a bigger size. Okay, so between this period and this period here, uh, 500 traded, 500 contracts. Okay, now the smart uh, cluster here, uh, this is kind of a combination of uh, time and volume, and it will cluster it. Okay, so you're looking for the majority uh, of, uh, of the traders uh, based on time and volume. All right, so now the block trades, okay, let's, let's input 100 here. I wonder how many we'll get. None. No, there's one up here. Okay. Uh, let's input 50. Okay. So a dot is going to appear when a, a trade. Wow, there's only one. No, there's one down here. Uh, let's put in. Let's put in 10. Okay. All right. We'll see quite a few more now. Okay. So. Uh, and you can see that there's there's not a lot of these block trades that go through nowadays. Um, you know they'll um, uh, instead they're gonna you know they're gonna they're gonna break that up. Uh, now we because they break it up that way we can also uh, uh, filter for it um, and um, not look at block trades. Okay. Instead uh, we want to look at um, minimum accountable dot volume here. And what this means is um, uh, you, you'll filter out uh, some of these uh, uh, trade or uh, some of these contracts here uh, by um, inputting. Okay, so let's input 500. That's too much. Let's input 100. Okay, so what this means uh, is um, within you know that all that algorithmic activity that we saw how these are broken up when we zoomed in right um well we can only show so many events uh within the screen here and um one pixel uh right now uh is the smallest amount that uh, we can we can show uh where, where the volume took place within that one pixel and we we just filtered out all of the rest of the uh, the volume here to show that within one vertical slice here pixel, um, uh, paint a dot where there are a hundred contracts that traded within that when the, within that one little pixel. Okay, so that's how we're filtering for it. So let me uh, let me take off the filter and uh, and then I'll zoom in here. To this area, okay, okay, and you know, notice how this is all, you know, all these trades bro are broken up here. But notice how when I zoom back out, okay, we consolidate all of that. Okay, it's just visually. I mean, all of the trade events are there, but um, we're we're just um, uh, compressing the timeline on the bottom here, as you can see, uh, as I'm zooming out. Okay, and as I'm zooming out, uh, there were just there were so many trades that took place here that um, uh, we just painted as a as a one big dot, you know, bigger dot. Okay, uh, 
okay? And uh, so visually it's aggregated, just, just graphically. Uh, now, uh, all of this other, you know, a lot of traders might uh, think that there's too many dots, it's too much noise, they only wanna look at the significant volume. So what you can do is um, we can filter for it here, okay? So let's, let's input actually something a little bit less, maybe 50 or maybe even 20. Um, okay, now, um, so within that one pixel, 20 contracts traded here, okay? Now you'll note here, okay, let's go into this little area right here, okay, this dot. As I zoom in, that, that condition will no longer be true at a certain point there, okay? Now it disappears. And why is that? Because those, those uh, 20 uh, events here, where those 20 contracts are spread out now on more than just one pixel, okay? So this is based on your zoom, all right? So if I zoom out, uh, it you know, it's not kind of a set and forget type of thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's based on your zoom, uh, but uh, you can filter for, uh, you know, looking for more significant volume if you, you know, a lot of traders like to do that because they, uh, they just wanna look for, you know, the majority of the trades, okay? Not every single event. All right. Okay. All right. Well, interesting. Interesting. Great price uh, action today, uh, and um, uh, great to uh, great to read the order flow. Uh, again, uh, same, same stuff. This is just higher time frame, uh, but we can, we can see here structure broken, right? Initiated buying, uh, and then, uh, and now we're accepting above this area here. Okay. looks like we're just about to get a retest of it now. Okay. And you can see that's why they're, they're, they're here, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, providing liquidity on the bid. Okay. Because, uh, you know, this is, if this is the new, uh, value of this product, uh, it's going to accept above this 21 level. So, uh, responsive buyers uh, down here at 21. All right, guys. Yeah, let's uh, let's call it a week. Uh, thank you, Francisco. I uh, really appreciate the comment there. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, we, um, this is just a, it's a fantastic uh, tool uh, and it's offering really, uh, you know, quite, quite a transparent view of the market. Okay. I mean, just putting these pieces together, uh, you can see we, we do it, we do it all, you know, every day here. Uh, today was a lot clearer than, than others. Okay. So coming down into the high liquidity here. So targeting that high liquidity. Okay. We also have our structure, right? And uh, and we're right into it now. Let's see if uh, let's see if buyers start to step back in. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Yeah, let's call it a, a week. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for coming, and um, uh, we'll catch up with you on Monday. All right, guys. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye bye.